from KSAT 12. The night beat starts right now. All right, let's enjoy the next 24 to 36 hours because colder weather is on the way. But even that won't be the coldest of the next few days. Hold on. Mia Montgomery is standing by with a preview of when that cold front arrives. Yes, so we have two cold fronts actually that are in the forecast over the next several days. The first of which is going to move in tomorrow night, early Friday. That one will bring in some cooler air. In fact, a light freeze possible by Saturday morning. But it's the second cold front that's going to pack a bigger punch when it comes to Arctic air moving into the region. That one arrives late. Sunday and early Monday of next week. Here's a look at your weather headlines before we can even get there, though. Still have a lot of changes to talk about. Starting off with tomorrow morning, some patchy morning fog will likely greet you out the door for the morning commute. Then we'll see more sunshine in the afternoon, warmer temperatures in the 70s for most of us. Then we see that first cold front move in tomorrow night. That's going to kick up very windy conditions for our Friday. Wind gusts upwards of about 50 miles per hour will be possible. Then it's early next week. Late Sunday, early Monday, whenever we see that Arctic air move in. Yes, a few mornings of hard freezes will be possible by Monday and into Tuesday. We're going to break it all down and get you the latest details coming up a little bit later on. All right, thank you, Mia. Colder temperatures in the forecast is leading ERCOT to issue a weather watch for next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Just like last summer, the kind of alert means ERCOT, the state's power. Uh, provider is expecting higher electrical demands, which comes with the potential for lower power reserves. ERCOT still expects conditions to be normal during this weather watch. Okay, so as many of us prepare for the first hard freeze of the season, leaders in San Antonio and nonprofits are gearing up to help those who don't have a warm place to stay. Yeah, but there's a problem in all of this. The largest facility that houses the homeless is running out of space. The night team's John Paul Barajas reports. We've been operating over capacity for about two years now. So last night we slept um, 1,720 individuals and families all together. So we're really at our max. Haven for Hope has managed to keep operations running by utilizing non-traditional sleep spaces. Communications director Terry Bailey explains making dual use of their chapel and administration building lobby. But now they're maxed out of their overflow capacity as well. You guys are making the change to prioritize families. Have y'all done this before? No, this is the first time that we've made this, this change. What makes this year different? I think what's different is that we're seeing more people experiencing homelessness. They may be staying in shelter longer because of the waiting list for the public housing vouchers. Now with the lowest temperatures of the season forecasted. Here are your weather headlines when it comes to this Arctic air. What we know right now, hard freeze is expected. Monday and into Tuesday, less than 36 hours below freezing though. Haven for Hope and other nonprofits like Corazon Ministries are working together to make sure those without a home have a place to go. All of our partner agency outreach teams are seeing these messages that are coming through. They're able to get transportation to those clients and get them connected to another shelter that might have space. Morgan Hadley with Corazon adds, it's not just the shelter that's needed. They're also asking for volunteers and donations from trash bags and paper towels to blankets and coats or anything to help keep people warm. It could be you, it could be me at any time. We might be one emergency away from not being able to pay our bills. And so we just ask people to take compassion. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. So that right there, me and I, we touched on that with a digital special on how to prepare for extreme weather. We also talked about hot conditions, but the cold is what we're focusing on right now. We have a lot of good information to share, including how you can help people who need shelter. Yep, and the Homeless Connections Hotline is essentially a one-stop shop to find services for someone who is unhoused. That number is 210-207-1799. Okay, so now let's go back to the special, right? We want you to scan the QR code that you're about to see on your screen. There it is, all the way to the left. Whatever the weather, how to prepare for extreme weather is live right now at ksat.com. You can also watch it this Saturday at 5 right here on KSAT 12. As if you didn't have enough to worry about? Yeah, CPS Energy is warning its customers tonight about a potential scam. Several people have called CPS saying that someone is calling them posing as a CPS employee. The utility is reminding everybody that its employees will rarely ask to come inside your home and will almost never ask to see your energy bill. By the way, if you have any questions, just call CPS. And to an update now on a story that KSAT has been following since its beginning. A third arrest made in the murder case of these two, Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra. 
and their unborn child. This is who was arrested today. She was walked in front of our cameras. This is 47 year old Merta Romanos. She was arrested today. Police tell us she is the stepmother of Christopher Preciado, the suspect who's accused of killing Savannah and Matthew. Officers also say the gun used to kill them belongs to Romanos. She's also accused of trying to help clean up the murder scene. Romanos charged with three felonies, abuse of a corpse, alter, destroy, conceal of a human corpse, as well as tampering with evidence. We're still waiting to hear if yet more charges will be added to this case. So plan on keeping it on KSAT and we'll keep you informed on all of our platforms on air, KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, and of course our KSAT YouTube channel. Now we're learning more about this man tonight. He is accused of shooting at SAPD officers during a standoff earlier this week. Well, it turns out he used to be a Bear County Sheriff's deputy. Yeah, 43 year old Jose Vasquez was arrested following that standoff on the far west side. The sheriff's office tells our case that investigates that he worked for them from 2007 through 2011. Vasquez was dishonorably discharged in 2011 after being arrested for official oppression. And according to court records, that charge was eventually dismissed. Now that standoff, let's go back to that. It started around 2 a.m. yesterday at an apartment complex on Timber Creek Drive near West Military. SAPD says that Vasquez shot several times at officers before then being shot by officer Jesse Noriega. Vasquez was booked into jail after being released from the hospital and now he's charged with two counts of a deadly conduct with a firearm and aggravated assault against a public servant. Meanwhile, officer Noriega is on administrative duty, which is protocol. Still lots of questions tonight about the future of District 10 Councilman Mark White. You may remember that KSAT reported that San Antonio police arrested the Northeast Side Councilman last month on a DWI charge. Yeah, since then, we've been working to find out what happens to his status within the council. Today, city council members discuss next steps during a closed door meeting. I'm not going to judge their actions. I'm willing to accept whatever it is uh, that they want to do um, because, again, um, I should not have gotten in the car that night to drive home. And so I got to accept, you know, whatever it is that um, that they feel is, is necessary to do. There's no word yet on what actions they may take. Mayor Ron Nuremberg said he will issue a statement sometime tomorrow. Now, staying with City Council, its leaders are not going to call for a ceasefire in the Israel Hamas war, and this is a change. Initially, three council members wanted to hold a special meeting to talk about council taking up a resolution to support a ceasefire. So far, about 25,000 Palestinians and Israelis have died since that war began three months ago. But council member Manny Pelias, who was one of the initial three council members asking for the meeting, said he no longer supports it. And activists who have been urging leaders to take a stand against the war, as you can imagine, not too happy. This is just another way that local government can carry the voice of its of, of its city, right? And the city is asking for a ceasefire. I think that putting people through that meeting, um, which was, in, in my mind, I'm convinced it was going to devolve into a circus uh, and, and be chaotic and hurtful, would have done more damage than just putting forth a resolution knowing that we were going to lose. Still, activists with the group San Antonio for Justice in Palestine say they are not going to give up. They say they're going to work to get another council member to support a call for a ceasefire. And Nikki Haley joining Ron DeSantis on stage tonight for the final Republican debate before next week's Iowa caucuses. The two traded barbs over abortion, the war in Israel, and something we're very familiar with here in Texas the border. That's right. Both of them spoke about how they'd ease the crisis at the southern border. We'll go with DeSantis now. He told voters that he would finish building a wall along the border with Mexico, making them pay for it. Where have you heard that before? Also adding that the U.S. has to enforce the rule of law. Now, Haley, she stressed that migrants coming into the U.S. illegally need to be deported because, quote, they're cutting in line. The former president and current Republican frontrunner Donald Trump has not appeared in any of the GOP debates so far. And mark your calendar, the Iowa caucuses are next Monday. And former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie wasn't at tonight's Republican debate after dropping out of the race this afternoon. Christie based his campaign on derailing Donald Trump's path back to the White House. He's faced pressure in recent weeks to drop out as other Republicans who don't back Trump are trying to look to unite behind a viable alternative. Christie has not commented on who he might endorse in the future. By the way, KSAT 12 is your election home. You can look for this page on KSAT.com for everything you need to know about local, state, and national races 
in 2024. We just want to remind you this is National Blood Donor Month. The best way to celebrate is, of course, to roll up your sleeves and donate blood if you can. Our blood banks just don't have enough supply right now. One donation could help up to three patients in need. If you want to donate for the first time or if you're a pro, if you've done this before, just visit DonateBloodToday.com if you want to schedule your donation. It was a shocker, the end of an era. One of college football's legendary head coaches is calling it a career. Larry Ramirez is going to have more on Nick Saban's decision coming up in sports. Plus, a popular place for college students and for police calls now closed. How those living near that area solve the problem. We'll be right back. Noise, parking problems, fights. Just some examples of the problems that homeowners near UTSA Boulevard and Babcock Road say they've been dealing with for about five years. This past weekend, the city of San Antonio police finally shut this place down after finding out it was out of compliance with the city permit. The night team's Patty Santos tells us how the homeowners United Front really played a role in collecting evidence against the business. UTSA Boulevard at College Park community entrances like day and night. On the right, about five blocks of overflow parking every weekend after 11 p.m. Noise, um, it was the parking, um, blocking, you know, residents' driveways. The crowds headed to bars like the Sandbox, which opened in 2018. Some residents just couldn't take it. We had a lot of people just decide to move mm -hmm. because they couldn't deal with the noise and the traffic, and they felt the city had you know, basically abandoned us to the problem. Residents have been complaining about added noise, property damage, and crime, but this coming weekend will be different. I think that's why you're seeing other neighborhoods celebrating. This past weekend, the city and San Antonio police forced the business to shut down. For the past year or so, it's really acted as a, a college bar that's been pretty out of hand. Michael Shannon with the city says the Sandbox had a certificate to operate as a restaurant. That meant most of their income should have been made from food. Instead, it was from alcohol. The months-long investigation was led by homeowners who showed the bar was breaking the law. They're the eyes and the ears out there at 2 a.m. Uh, when, when a lot of the patrons are coming outside the bar. <laughs> That reached out to the bar manager by email, phone, and in person to, get a hold of to find know. out what happened. We're still waiting. Shannon tells us a separate bar in the area is also on their radar. According to San Antonio police, over the last two years, there's been 800 calls to that address, which has multiple businesses. 500 of those calls were in the past year. There's power in numbers. College Park residents say their consistent calls to the city police and a united front. Paid off. The first three years, I think we kind of felt like we were spinning our wheels. Yeah. And uh, homeowners just kind of shut their, shut their doors and quit complaining because it didn't do any good. I think that's going to speak to a lot of communities in our, in our area. Patty yeah. Santos, KSAT 12 News. Well, now we want you to take a live look outside. Look at that, 47 degrees and... Yeah, after speaking with our meteorologist, Mia Montgomery, I'm just thinking about what we're going to be dealing with in a few hours. And yeah, very cold. Yes, and especially the next several days. So this morning, it was a cold start. We got down to 30 degrees officially here in the Alamo City. So we did have a light freeze to kickstart this Wednesday. A little bit warmer tomorrow and into Friday mornings. In fact, we're only expected to fall into the mid 40s both days. Then we see the first batch of some colder air move in in time for the weekend. So another light freeze is possible on Saturday. Then that temperature roller coaster just continues near 40 on Sunday. Then the second cold front moves in and this one that arrives late Sunday night and early Monday morning. That's the one that's going to pack a bigger punch when it comes to the Arctic air that's expected to filter into South Central Texas. Hard freezes are expected Monday and into Tuesday. Then maybe another light freeze Wednesday morning before we start to warm things up into the middle of next week. So let's time that out and let's talk about that first. As Stephanie had just mentioned, 47 degrees right now here in in San Antonio. Take a look farther up to the north, though. Across the northern tier, it's two degrees right now in Bismarck, North Dakota. But if you think that's cold, 
Take a look at where the Arctic air is right now across portions of Canada. Minus 11 in Calgary, minus 38 in Yellowknife. It is not going to get that cold here in south central Texas, but watch what happens here over the next several days. We'll really start to see that cold air work farther southward by Saturday and even into Sunday. Still a bit warmer here. 60s are expected this weekend when it comes to those afternoon highs Saturday and into Sunday as well. Then we start to see that boundary work into south central Texas is late Sunday night and into early Monday morning. You will know when it is here. We'll see even more gusty north winds kick up and yes, temperatures are expected to tumble with that first hard freeze expected early Monday. Low 20s feeling even colder when you factor in those winds. It'll be a close call and if we're able to climb above freezing into Monday afternoon right now, it's looking possible mid 30. So still very cold for your Monday afternoon plans. Then into Tuesday morning, a few degrees colder upper teens possible with those wind chills even lower before we finally start to warm things back up just a bit more by the middle of next week. So here's a look at your weather headlines when it comes specifically to that Arctic air on the way. We know hard freeze is expected Monday and into Tuesday less than 36 hours below freezing though. So that's one of the many reasons why this is not going to be anything close to what we saw almost three years ago in 2021. Still with those cold temperatures on the way, be sure to carve out some time over the next several days to prepare the four P's pets, plants, people, as well as your pipes. In terms of any wintry precipitation, there is a very small window where we'll be monitoring for that, especially Monday morning. But as of right now, this current forecast odds are still looking pretty low for us here in San Antonio. So that comes behind the second cold front, but the first one, that's when the winds are going to be even stronger. So remember earlier this week, we had very strong gusts upwards of 40 to 50 miles per hour. More of the same expected into Friday. So make sure that we're also taking those wind precautions before that first front arrives tomorrow night. Real quick, do want to talk about tomorrow. I think it's possible that we see some areas of patchy fog develop first thing in the morning, especially to the southeast of San Antonio, but still probably a good idea to give yourself a little bit of extra time out the door tomorrow just to be on the safe side. Again, not as cold as what we saw earlier today, starting off in the 40s for most of us, maybe a few upper 30s, especially north and west of town. After we see that fog clear on out of here, a little bit more sunshine returns into the afternoon, 61 degrees at noon, a high temperature topping off around 70. 74 degrees. We talked about that temperature roller coaster cooler and windy on Friday. Upper 50s that light freeze expected early Saturday. Then we start to warm things up again Saturday and into Sunday before that more impactful cold front in terms of temperatures arrives early next week. By the way, if you're heading out to the March on Monday, know that it is going to be very, very cold. So you will want to dress warm for that as well. Very. Thank you. All right. Spurs win. Spurs win. Spurs win. Spurs beat Finally. the Pistons, right? Yes. As we were hoping they would and as we thought they should. Wimby was a little off when it came to his shooting, but I'll tell you what, his all-around game was awesome, and he achieved a first in his young NBA career. And the Dallas Cowboys, well, they are happy to be playing at home on Sunday. Coming up. feels like you know we're we're more ready for the moment um ready for you know whatever adversity that we may face in the upcoming weeks and um you know we're just ready to go out there and get it tony pollard says the cowboys have a better mindset compared to the first time they made the playoffs under coach mccarthy in 2021 in big board sports in the NBA, the Spurs dominated the Detroit Pistons tonight to snap their five-game slide and beat the worst team in the league. First quarter, Victor Wimbanyama grabs the Piston miss, and then he throws deep the other way down the court to Jeremy Sohan for a fast-break slam dunk. Spurs led 31-19 after one. Second quarter, Malachi Branham shoots and misses and tips the ball to Wimby for some jam. Wimby had 12 points at the break to help the Spurs lead 63-51 at halftime. Third frame, Wimby using his height to his advantage again. Devin Vassell lobs it to Wimby, who tips the ball up to himself, then grabs it for an easy bucket on the foul. I mean, that's not even fair. A bit later, Victor passes the ball behind his back to Sohan for two more to put the Spurs up by 19. Fourth quarter, the Spurs are up big when Victor feeds Doug McDermott for three. And that's Wimby's 10th assist of the game. The Spurs win 130 to 108 behind Wimby's first career triple double. 16 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists in just 21 minutes. 
I think it started on the defense end. We were getting stops and we were able to run. And I think our point guards were just doing a great job of getting the paint and finding our shooters. And obviously Vic having a triple double. Um, he's the game started to really slow down for him, and uh, he did a great job of finding cutters and shooters all night. Spurs will come back home to host the Charlotte Hornets Friday night at seven at the Frost Bank Center. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Winners of two straight heading into the postseason. The Dallas Cowboys moved indoors today in Frisco to get ready for the Green Bay Packers this weekend. Now, at one point, it looked like the boys would start the playoffs on the road, but things worked out for them, and now they'll open up at AT&T Stadium, where they went 8-0 this season, the NFL's only undefeated team at home. Uh, I mean, it's, that's big for us, being able to play at home, you know, in front of the fans, you know, let them come out and um, do what they do, support. Um, show up, show out, and um, just for us to go out there and execute and you know, continue doing what we're doing and keep that momentum going. And the Houston Texans are getting ready to host the Cleveland Browns Saturday, 3.30 p.m. at NRG Stadium. Rookie QB C.J. Stroud was named the AFC Offensive Player for Week 18. He's getting ready to face the Browns for the first time this season because he missed the Week 16 loss to the Browns while he was in concussion protocol. They're the number one defense for a reason. You know, they do a lot of special things. Starts up front. Uh, of course, Miles Garrett is one of the best players to ever play his game, and he proves it week in and week out. And um, their linebackers do a great job. Six is a great linebacker. He's a great player. Um, and then on the back end, they do a good job of, of having sticky coverage and things like that. So um, this got to be on an A game, execute at a high level, and uh, I'm excited for the matchup. In more NFL news, Pete Carroll is out as Seattle Seahawks head coach after 14 seasons. Seattle made the playoffs 10 times and won their only Super Bowl under Carroll in February 2014. He will remain with the team in an advisory role. And in college football, Alabama head coach Nick Saban announced he's retiring after 17 seasons in Tuscaloosa. He won six national championships with the Crimson Tide and one with the LSU Tigers. In his 28 years as a college head coach, he never had a losing season season. The Buttons hired a new head football coach after the break. Head football coach Glenn Mangold has a new home right across the street from KSAT 12 at Central Catholic High School. He has 34 years coaching experience and takes over at Central after spending the past decade with the New Braunfels Unicorns. He's ready to give back to the Catholic community and lead the Buttons. My family's excited. They're uh, ready to come to the first game and then just uh, enjoy being part of the Central Catholic family and the brotherhood that we have here. Basketball siblings Aiden and Antonio de Oils toured up last night. They combined for 47 points in the Poth Pirates 93-48 win against Lytle. Aiden had 31 and he made seven three-pointers. Hat tip to the boys. Very proud Aunt Julie and Texas A&M University San Antonio hired Chris Dial to launch its men's basketball program in the 2024-25 academic year. Dial comes by way of Our Lady of the Lake University, where he has been for five seasons. And very high scoring teams at Our Lady of the Lake, if I very remember Very high right. scoring indeed, yeah. Yeah, should be exciting. Yep. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, and we'll be right back. Streaming now. Um, we're about five to six hundred bucks a month on, on water usage. Their water bill more than doubled from one month to the next after a pipe sprung a leak. We, we had a break. Uh, the ground movement happens all over San Antonio. A few weeks later, we get a bill in the mail for a million gallons of water, fifteen thousand five hundred eighty dollars. That's just ridiculous. They've been bullying us, intimidating us. Now, Saw says it's time to pay up or have the water shut off. KSAT investigates the water company's policies on outrageously high bills. Streaming now on these platforms. And speaking of pipes, make sure we are taking time over the next several days to at least prepare them along with yourselves, pets and plants ahead of that second Arctic cold front that's going to move in late Sunday and early Monday. If you hard freezes early next week before we can get there, windy on Friday. All right, thank you and watch out for that fog tomorrow morning. That does it for us here on the Night Beat. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.